Hello. <laughs> what are we laughing at? I don't know. We started. I know, but both of us were going to say hello. Hello. What's this? Wow. <laughs> what are we doing? So forced. Um, <laughs> podcast. That's weird. Podca- well, podcast, we, yeah. We haven't done it in a while. No. Um, so, we... I don't know how long. We we put out over 100 episodes before. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, I think we were going for maybe like two and a half years. I don't, I'd, I'd have to check. Really? Yeah. Well, if you bear with me a moment. It was a long time. Um, I know that our last... Well, you said that our last one was June 2021. So that puts it a year and a bit. 16 months ago. Um, the very first one was the fifth... Oh, no. Just this shows me it doesn't show me all of them. Episode fourteen was on the fifteenth of February two thousand nineteen, so late twenty eighteen is when we begun. Wow! So we were going for nearly three years before. Oh my god! We cut. It's pretty good going. Yeah. You know, saying well, that, considering it was weekly. Yeah. Well, well, it was, nearly weekly. Yeah, and saying that most podcasts um, live and then die within the space of probably uh six months yeah it's pretty good going um, we tried we did uh i can't remember what caused this to end i think i well, think not ev- end like pause pause take temporarily a break. pause for take a 16 long break. months yeah um i think the main thing was that well many people found this that there was a lot of there was a lot of content creation during covid mm-hmm. right like loads of people and even us to fill the time with just making stuff, it right? Out. You know, we've got nothing else to do, so we might as well do that. Um, and as we kind of came out of COVID and everyone kind of got their life back, I think we found it more and more difficult to keep up with everything, continue to make everything. Yes, but also I think we just generally burnt out. Yeah. Yeah, but that's what I mean. Same. Yeah, but not because... We got our life back, but because, like, we'd just done so much content. Yeah, but when you're also doing loads of other things at the same time. Yeah, 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 it was busy, it was busy. But after many requests over mm. the past 16 months, um, we are back. I think we said that we were going to return after, like, six months, and then that didn't happen. Um, but here we are now. I think the main thing was the frequency of trying to... Well, I think there was two things. One, it was a lot of effort to do every week. Mm-hmm. And then two, um, well, every week, because mainly it's a lot of effort because uh, Zoe edits it, you know, to get rid of stuff. It's not Move just like, pauses. we don't re- just record it and slap it on and that's the yeah. job done. That's not, it's not the coast of what way of doing anything. Well, and we used to do like a YouTube channel version and then to like tweet it out and like all sorts of things as well, not just yeah. the actual episode. Yeah, so that was one. And then the second thing is I think we just honestly kind of ran out of things to say. Yeah. You know, during COVID, we obviously put out loads of content. We obviously discussed loads of things. But at the same time, we weren't able to have new experiences. Yeah. So you're very limited on what you could talk about because you couldn't really do much. Mm. So now that we're, well, things are kind of back to normal and everyone can, you know, go to theme parks again and new stuff is opening and all of that kind of jazz there's more to talk about more to discuss Mm. so we're back we're back we're rejuvenated we are i don't know it's not gonna be not gonna be weekly though is it probably no um i think we'll aim for monthly and see how it goes yes so you had the idea of the end of each month, yes. the last Friday of each month, as your will be there. as yeah your choice. Uh, no idea how long the episodes will be. The range for however long we end up discussing. Mm. But yeah, it's weird. I feel well. It's just kind of strange to be talking in front of Mike again. <laughs> um, I kind of missed it though. I did. I did enjoy, and I think people realised that I enjoyed just chatting absolute crap. Mm-hmm. about many things and listening well you know hearing back people's 
thoughts on on my rants about various topics your controversial opinions well they're not controversial opinions my opinions are based no. on facts and logic so no, no. controversial opinions arguments again based on facts and logic no um, what do we know no what do we know no is what i mean <laughs> um yeah no we have had a few requests so it's good to be back and I feel like you're, you lost your mojo a little bit while we were away, and what? now that's a bit rude. What does no, that like mean? not your mojo. What's the what's the right phrase? Your enthusiasm for yeah, creating. I I mean things just get a bit silly, don't they? With content creation, like it's almost pressure to create stuff, even though you don't want to do that thing or whatever and i think that's where we got to with the podcast was like we were just trying to stay on top of it and we weren't just chatting about what we wanted to chat about no it wasn't yeah well we were but yeah it was forced to like like continuously put stuff out yeah i think you're right i think coastal bar as a whole um we definitely started to do less and i did not want to do as much and found it difficult to maintain everything at the same capacity because i didn't really one a lot of the stuff i didn't actually like anymore mm-hmm. or wanted to change and then two yeah i just it, it was too difficult to keep up um and then i think the other side was that you know when you're just visiting the same theme parks over and over again it gets a bit boring and i think yeah. i think i kind of fell out with theme parks not fell out of theme parks but you know what i mean like, you weren't excited they weren't as interesting um and i think this year's been a kind of rejuvenation for that yeah with visiting the same theme parks through different people's eyes and then also visiting some new theme parks for the first time mm-hmm. you realize or i remember why i enjoy yeah riding roller coasters and visiting theme parks so much so it was kind of a case of everything um so yeah and speaking of new theme parks Today's topic is the best theme park in the world. Go on then. The Efteling in the Netherlands, which we went to a month ago now? Mid-September, so yeah, yeah, a month and a half. Well, probably like five weeks. Yeah. Interesting thing, in part the uh, Efteling vlog um, a few days ago, and someone left a comment and was like, why have you called it the Efteling? As opposed because to just Efteling. the Efteling. Well, and then a Dutch person in the comments was like, in Dutch, if you have Ling at the end, it doesn't make sense. It, it feels it doesn't feel right if you don't put the yeah. in front of it, right? So in in Dutch, it is the Efteling. Yeah. But Which in English, the Efteling. Yeah. Well, exactly, and that's why I've done it like that. But I think the on the English version of the Efteling's website, it doesn't say the Efteling. But it doesn't feel right to say Efteling. Yeah. I don't know. But it's Dutch, so you should go with the Dutch. Yeah, I well, guess. Well, let's call it the Efteling then. No, that's just weird. <laughs> anyway, best theme park in the world that we've been to so far. Yep, agree. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's very good. Yeah. It's a bit Come of a, on, when blanket. we were standing in the in the park, you said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's the best theme park I've been to for a while, for like at least six years. I went to Europa Park back in 2016 and I've kind of forgotten what that was like. I don't know if that can be it. Come Disneyland on. Disneyland Paris in 2016 as well for me, which, you know. That's it's not It's a different be kettle it. of fish, I guess, though, isn't it? Yeah. I, uh, I don't you like Disneyland Paris more? No. Why not? Because... The Efteling is like pure. The Efteling is like wholesome magic. Yeah. And Disney not... is now like incredible, but like commercial magic. Yeah, I can. I can and this is that. like just. I don't know how to describe the f- atmosphere. It's like literally like a fairy tale, and everything except for like the construction sites <laughs> is amazing. And like a whole, it's not even the same aesthetic as Disney. It's like a proper woodland, like quite Scandinavian type well, European yeah, vibe. European. Everything is so clean and like the architecture is great, but it's not like Disney in the fact that, like in Disney, you can kind of 
you kind of feel like they've made it as it is. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You can tell that it's been made to be incredible, whereas this is like more naturally... Feels more authentic. Yeah, that's a good word. Authentic. Yeah. I agree. I think a lot of theme parks struggle with that. Um, Disney definitely and even Europa Park I feel which is you know probably the other really big player in European theme parks it's too commercialized and Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel the same way as you said it kind of feels like they're a bit fake in a way they're trying yeah whereas Efteling just feels like it's always been there and it's never you know it just has been there for all time I don't know how to it's like timelessly yeah yeah everything feels like it's has its place in the park nothing really feels well there are a few things that do feel out of place but in the whole majority a lot of everything really kind of fits and it yeah it doesn't feel as if it is overly new or overly old Mm -hmm. it just kind of makes sense yeah i can't remember what our original point was now well you were saying that it was the best theme park you've been to yeah and like obviously we've not been to florida yet but I don't know. They're almost not even like in the same category of thing. I don't know how, I don't know why it's so different to like other theme parks I've been to. I think there's, yeah, there's a bit of a weird thing with a lot of the um, multi day theme parks, like the theme park resorts that are meant, you're meant to kind of travel to and spend days in, like mm-hmm. Disney World, perhaps Disneyland, Paris, Disneyland in Anaheim, and mm-hmm. Universal and all of that. None of them, none of the individual parks are well-rounded. Well, it's probably not true, but the Efteling is a its own discrete thing, mm-hmm. right? And everything they build is with the intention of making it as a whole better. Mm-hmm. When you look at places like Disney World, you know, you can't go to an individual park and get everything. You can't get everything from Hollywood Studios that a a theme park should have. Yeah. In terms of the well, the properly well-rounded nature of having enough rides, having a variety of rides for all ages, different types of rides, shows and everything, different food Mm -hmm. things. I don't think you can get a fully rounded experience by visiting each individual park. You have to go to all of them to get them all separately, which is obviously what happens when you build multiple theme parks because you want them all to be different. But then you lose out on the fact that they're now individual, separate things that you have to go, you have to collect them all, as it were. But but by doing that, you then have to separate them and have things in different ones because otherwise people wouldn't 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 visit you know epcot or whatever you have to put something exciting in epcot to make people go to epcot otherwise it's just pointless well that's why there's a roller coaster in epcot now there wasn't a roller coaster in epcot before well it wasn't it wasn't about that was it but no but and yeah but that's what the afterlink does very well is it feels like it's a very well-rounded park that has things for everyone all different types of rides and rides that make sense for what what the park is trying to do Mm -hmm. you know and like enough things that you could easily spend two days there, no problem. There's Even ju- on quiet days. Mm. There's just some parks out there that are nice to be in. Yeah. Some theme parks are theme parks, right? And you go and you ride the rides and that's the main kind of intention. Um, like Thought Park, I think, is a place where you, you know, you, you beeline. You go for a thrill. You beeline for the rides and you don't really want to spend too much time not doing rides because yeah. it can be a bit grim at times, depending on when you visit. Yeah. Um, whereas certain parks are not like that at all. Certain parks you can just sit in and just watch the world go by. Mm-hmm. Like a prime example for us before the afternoon was Liseberg. Yeah. You could just sit on the hillside or sit wherever and just watch everything because it was so nice. Mm-hmm. And Efteling is another prime example, mainly because it feels almost like a park at the same time, doesn't it? Yeah. And as you said, it doesn't feel fake so then it feels like an, it's an it's an extension of the netherlands as opposed to it being this commercial yeah separate yeah. entity which i guess in a way disney is an extension of america because it's a very american culture disney is like part of their culture but this is different it's like not the history but like 
it's like the core like everybody knows these things that are there and it's like folklore type vibes mm. if you get me mm-hmm. i don't know how to explain it yeah but well, i don't know if the reason why it's so such a different feel is because it's not for profit i mean that helps yeah so the afterling doesn't Whatever profit they do make goes back into the organization, which is essentially the, a great formula for building a good theme park, right? Yeah. Because then you're not completely screwing the park over every time that it makes money, which then goes off to these random people and the park never sees it again. Yeah. So they're constantly building things to improve the park. Um, and, you know, obviously that's a really good way to make the park better because they're not always just looking for profit. It doesn't matter anymore. They're not building things for profit. They're not like saying, hang on a minute, is this going to make us any money? For example, like they have, which isn't this what used to be the original thing was this fairy tale walkthrough area. So it's like a woodland area and you walk through it and there's like little houses with little Scenes. you know so- stories that are yeah. displayed um you know like characters are there um like rapunzel rapunzel like Snow this White. weird sheep and the wolves thing yeah. like loads of different ones from obviously like their their culture um and that used to be the only thing they had but you were saying that they keep adding different scenes to that things even now. Well, we saw that they were refurbing some yeah. of them and, and doing them up, yeah. Which, can you imagine, like, I don't know, I feel like if another park had that, they would just think, that's lovely, it's heritage, but we're just going to leave it as it is. Whereas they're, like, investing mm. in something that's not going to, you know, you're not going to go to Effling because they've added a new scene, but it just like it builds on what they have and like makes it even more exciting because obviously not all the scenes were incredible the first ones they had but they're like improving yeah. even that kind of stuff i think that's a very european thing to do the other part that springs to mind are making improvements that don't really make any well i say make financial sense but it's all in, in the sense of improving customer satisfaction mm-hmm. right but that don't really make any They're not money mar- back. They can't market. Yeah, is uh, hands apart. They're constantly yeah. making the place look nicer, whether it's like doing up the entrance plaza or just essentially like refurbing buildings and giving them new facades and try to tie all of the places, the different areas together. Yeah. It's the exact same kind of vibe and they keep iteratively improving on it. And, you know, I went four years ago and the entire park's very different now mm. in just four years because every year they do a bit more and it just looks better and better and better. Yeah. But, yeah, I think that's a very European thing to yeah. do. I don't think you'd get that very much on the, like... Well, I think it's a very family-owned European theme park thing to do. Yeah, You wouldn't get it from Merlin or any of the big players. Yeah, obviously they, like, do maintenance and add, yeah. like, new little things, but it feels very deliberate that they're looking for the spots where there's something amiss or something that they could add that's not necessarily like let's just save our money up to get a big coaster so that mm. we can tell everyone to come to us yeah but then it's almost like they don't even need to because their reputation is obviously like well, this to, is pe- it. to the people who live in the netherlands like you know it's a no-brainer that you'd go to the effling probably because it's just a thing yeah you know well it's a thing for mainland europe as a whole isn't it yeah um but you're right i think once you've got the reputation for being a nice park then it's hard people to lose will, it well people it's hard to lose it people will want to come back and all you need to do is show that you are constantly improving mm-hmm. and people will come back regularly to see those improvements mm-hmm. even if they are small or minor if, if you're a nice enough theme park then that's fine yeah so um but yeah, anyway that was a six seven eight minute I mean, ramble on yeah. We haven't even really spoken about it yet. Yeah. Um yeah, so it's very good is what you're trying to say. It's very good. But why? Why? I knew you were gonna say that. Um Take us through some of the rides. Okay. Or you know, you can take us through if you can remember our day. Can you remember our day? Yeah. Of course I can. It's like etched in my mind. Exactly what okay, we did. but first of all, everybody just needs to put their Zoe hat on. Okay, because What does that mean? This park isn't for everyone, though. People are going to listen to this and be like, uh, oh, it's right. not that good. No, no, what are sure, you talking sure, sure. About? Um, but if you just think about what I'm about to say with, from my perspective. Well, hold on. Let, it's not just your perspective. It's 
No, so, but what I'm trying to say is this park is as if it's been created for me. Right. I see, I see what you're getting at. Yes. But hold, hold on a second. <laughs> I think the main kind of point to summarize is that the Efteling is not a theme park that has loads of roller coasters. No, it's no. not a thrill theme park. So if you're expecting really crazy rides from them in terms of thrill and excitement. Look elsewhere. That ain't it. And as soon as you go in with that in mind, then you're fine. But if you were to go in with the intention of the Efteling is a really good theme park, so it must have thrill rides and that must be why people like it, you're going to not like but it. But I don't know if I believe what you just said because does Disney have good rides? No. And that's got a great reputation. People so realize. what are you talking about? No, no, no. People realize that Disney aren't thrill. And even no, well, hold on. Okay, even, so if you even tell, roller coaster you... enthusiasts like that, sorry, Mister Taylor, Do to bring you up, but <laughs> before he went to Disney World properly, yeah, he slated it all the time. What their... because it didn't have thrill rides? Yeah, f- exactly that. And then he went there and realized, oh, it's not about the thrill rides. And as soon as you understand that it's not about, I the think thrill you rides, did that as well. Why would? When did I? Because do that? we used to have arguments on this podcast about the fact that Disney is not about the thrill rides. No, no, no I... we did. Yeah, it's sure. It's probably I, all there that we can listen back to. Well, I, I'm not sure if that's true. I've, I, often I think s- you've evolved a little bit in terms of what you're looking for. I often slate... I mean, it depends, right? It dep- I think it depends on... There's certain thrill rides. Tower of Terror, I'd argue, is like a thrill ride to some degree. But I think I often slate Disney be- for their ride choices, not in okay. the, in terms of them not being thrill rides. Their cloning some, and their Yeah, like, something like choices. Crush's Coaster yeah. for being an absolute ridiculous move. Okay. Stuff like that. I... You know, so okay. But anyway, anyway, talk about why it's it's the perfect Zoe part. Yeah, because what you've got yourself is a dive coaster. Absolutely solid choice for me. Love a bit of diving. So hold on, let, let's bring just, just dial it back first because that makes no sense. Why? What what kind of roller coaster summarized generally would family? Well, that's not true. Family slash slightly more than family. I don't think that's true either. Well, you just explained it. Then. Well, you you like rides. <laughs> well, what do I like? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant what does Efteling have? No, 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 no. I like smooth, fun rides that make me laugh. That Often aren't re-rideable. Usually. Re-rideable. That aren't jolty or backbreaking. But they still need some element that makes them a. A slightly less than uh what's the word like i don't know you 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 are not the hugest fan of icon because it sometimes doesn't do a lot okay so yeah it's got to have a so special it element needs, to it. well a bit of a kick yeah a bit of a kick yeah but not too much of a kick yeah is basically it yeah which you basically then have described like every single gci roller coaster ever yeah but also, just like, it's, it's got to have the thing where it makes me laugh. So that could be quite a lot of things, which we'll go into. Okay. So now you can carry up. So. Baron. Dive coaster. Yeah. Baron. Uh-huh. Incredible scenes with the theming. Yeah. The story. Yeah. It was in Dutch and I even knew what was going on. Yeah. I was a little bit scared in the pre-show because I always get scared when the lights go off and everyone's just stood there because I don't know where we're going. Incredible. Um, lovely ride. <laughs> lovely ride. Um, I mean, it's a dive coaster, so we're not going to go into like, oh, it's really short and blah. It's just a dive coaster. As dive coasters go, it's, it's like middle tier yeah, average, dive coaster. But the theming pushes it up, I would say. Oh, definitely. And if you think about Valkyria... Lisa Berg in Sweden. I think I prefer Baron. Yeah. Um, I don't know. For our American listeners who don't know what Baron is, right? It's it's only a small dive coaster, so it's six seats across. So it's not like your big ones. I don't know how tall it is. It's, it's probably uh, it can't be that 150 tall. feet, 130 feet or something like that. It's, it's not really tall at all. Um, and it has a relatively short layout. But as you say, the, the main thing that makes it good is the theming and the fact that it, the way it's set up, the way it looks. Yeah. Well, first of all, you get in the queue and you get handed a little tiny ticket yeah. that the man on the front gives you. The man? That, the person. Or woman or whoever they exactly. are. 
and they give it to you and you go through and you have to like look at where you're going a b or whatever it was Mm -hmm. so that's exciting in Mm -hmm. itself yeah um also a lot of paper wasted so i hope it's recycled that's the front row queue Um, basically because of the way the pre-show works they have to make sure that the people who are going in the front are separate from the people who were not going in the front. Okay, that's very boring. I don't need to so know that. So that's why they give you tickets. Okay, but it's very exciting. It is very exciting. Uh, you go through into this little room, which goes dark, but it's kind of like a, um, like a warehouse vibe. or like a, um... It's like a changing room for the Oh, is that miners. what it is? It kind of is, isn't it? I, did, I didn't notice like, the almost. details. Um Wow, and you're then rubbish. you watch, and then you watch the little pre-show with yeah. Baron, the Baron guy. There's English subtitles um, as well. Yeah, which was helpful. Um, so I can't remember what he did, but he the the mine is haunted, and then he yeah. says you have to go and be a miner, basically, which yeah. is fab. Um, and then like the ghosts are just really cool how they do the ghosts. Very cool. Um, yeah. So then you go into the main station, and you like have to walk down the stairs. Don't oh, you? you or missed up the, the stairs. You missed the best bit. Is this the one where you wait behind the door? Yes. Yes. So you go into a room. <laughs> and you go into you... a room with the Baron. He's with the Baron, to yes, you. I forgot. Because you recorded him, didn't you? Mm. So he's like up on the balcony, like being it's not a, in the vault. I didn't include that shot, but yeah. Um just for our personal records, is that shot of the Baron? Well um, <laughs> sometimes the Tim Clips just don't fit with yeah, the way well, the pacing is. But it's yeah, I'll use it in the future for yeah, a yeah, reference yeah. of theming or whatever. Yeah. You'll see it at some point. Yeah. Um, it's not that good. Yeah, so you have to wait behind your door, which you absolutely love waiting behind a door. Yeah, I think air gates ruin the immersion of roller coasters yeah. uh, and or theme park rides generally. And as soon as you're presented, well, as soon as you have to stand behind a theme door and the door opens to an empty carriage mm-hmm. that you then get onto... It's just so Isn't much that more immersive. How different that is! It, it's because, stupidly different. Because watching people get on the ride before you, a, is very boring. It like I'd rather just stand in a room where I can't see anything than watch people get on. Yeah. And b, you just feel like no one else was there. Like it's just exactly. a private, it's your personal. Yeah, yeah I hundred percent agree. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it just makes it so much nicer. I think, and there's also. The anticipation of it as well, then, yeah. because you don't know when the door's going to open. Yeah, and um, the first time we went, we didn't know what was going to be behind the door. What? Well, I knew what was going to well, be no, behind because the you door. don't know what it's going to look like, do you? Yeah, I did. Okay, well, you've seen it, <laughs> but any normal person wouldn't no, know. No, yeah, is. yeah, it's a very nice station. Yeah, it looks like a warehouse, like a uh, brick, it's the mine, bricked right? up warehouse. Well, yeah, isn't it the mine mine you're, house? You're, yeah, the mine house. Yeah. yeah, you're boarding the vehicle to go to the mine. Yeah. Um. I don't know why you need to go up before you go down to go into a mine. It's not really how it works. No, no. But it's not. We'll let that. But we're just we'll doing a very slide. dramatic entrance to the mine. Yes. Oh, of course. Anyway, so you get on the ride, then you go into a little room before you go up the lift hill. An on-ride pre-show. Incredible scenes. All pre-shows, all rides should have on-ride pre-shows. Is what I was going to say. Yes. And I would choose that over a standing pre-show. So would I. <laughs> because you get to sit down. Well, but not also, just that. the flow of it all is The flow is of it better. all is much better. I, uh, though I, I I appreciate having both. Yeah. That's, I think, the best. That you're but do you know it. when you've ridden something loads of times, like Wicker Man, I cannot be bothered to stand in the pre-show for Wicker Man. But if there was something on ride before mm, you set off, I'd to. be fine with it. Right. Because it's part of the ride, but because it's a pre show, I just, I know it. I don't want to. Yeah, but do you know, know I mean? it if it was on the ride as yeah, well. Yeah, but like you're on the ride by that point. Right. So it's part of the ride. Sure. I don't know how that makes sense. No. But yeah, it's better. Anyway, so these ghosts, like projection ghosts, like come out of the walls and stuff. And they're so, the song they play, mm, creepy. I can hear it. It's so weird. Like I didn't like it at all. Um, I think they're called the white women. Oh, um. Yeah, so they like fly around and sing to you, and then they all like disappear into the little hole, the little window. It's very clever. And they all go out. Yeah. yeah. And then you like follow them out into the lift hill. Yeah. And the Good. way all the cogs move when yeah. when they when you're going up the lift, mm-hmm. the bell chimes when you go down the drop. I didn't hear the bell chimes. Okay. I was too busy screaming. Yeah. Yeah. It's very. And clever. then there's a standard dive coaster situation, but yeah, all good. It's fine. I- it does everything it needs to do. Yep. Um, and it's just, it's probably the most I was going to say most thrilling, but 
you know, it's the most modern thrill coaster that Park has. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what they need. Yeah. Something with a big drop on it that is thrill enough, but not too much. Yeah. And if you're visiting with kids, it's a nice step up. Like, it's quite a short oh, yeah. thrill ride that they can just try out if they can get past the ghosts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Baron, very good. Yes. So you got a dive coaster. you got a dive coaster. <laughs> the next one you've got is a GCI. Um, a pair. Twinning, is that what you call twinning? it? Twinning? No. <laughs> twinning GCI. A pair GCIs. of dueling, racing. Dueling, that's the word. Yeah. Yes. Um, remind me of the name Joris Joris and Andy Drak George eh? and the Dragon okay George and the Dragon George and the dra Dragon I see you just call it Joris <laughs> George and the dra Dragon the Dragon yeah that's it <laughs> Joris Water and Joris Fire yeah um nice nice nice, nice. solid nice solid nice. choice there because A it's like bolder vibes. It's like bolder Wicker Man vibes. Your face right now. Because Bolder is not the no, one no, I no, would describe. No, no, no. Listen to me. I'm talking about my experience. The way I laugh on Boulder is similar to the way I laugh on this and similar to the way I laugh on Wicker Man. Yeah. It's because th these rides, you know, they maybe the bigger ones do, but we haven't really been on too many bigger ones. But at least the middle-sized GCIs, they pack enough of a punch, but not too much of a punch. But what they are is kind of chaotic in a good way. Yeah. In the sense of that, you know, they change directions a lot because they're wooden, they don't ride perfectly glossy, which is good, I think, because it adds some characteristics and yeah. that's what makes it fun yeah. and more re-rideable. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of feels crazy that you're hurting It does, track. and you have the feeling of like, it's just doing what it, whatever it wants. Hmm. Whereas, like on a steel coaster, you just it seems like the same thing every single time. Yeah, you know. Um, anyway, but they're really good. Um, I don't know which one I prefer because they're pretty much. I think I prefer water. 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 Okay. Can't remember what water was like. Um, but my favorite thing was every time the train wins. The little flag at the end swings Rotates. around to say that you're the winner. And then you enter the station and all the little flags come down the and banners. they cheer for you. Yeah, the banners come down yeah. to say that you've won. It's very cool. Just that is just yes. such a perfect touch for that ride. Definitely. You know, it could yeah. be so boring without that. It just elevates. Like It could just completely changes like the feeling of it all. Mm. It's yeah. special. I mean, while we're on it, they've got a pair of GCIs because the capacity of GCIs are not the highest and Efteling because they get so many visitors really want to make sure that their rides are high capacity so mm. the queues aren't very long yeah right you know Baron's capacity is pretty good but many of the other rides are even much higher and I think the fact that they have two is just yeah really good in yeah. that regard and it's just more fun it is more fun yeah but the way they race together yeah. it's good that they're dueling but not identical yeah but there's enough Actual dueling Overlap. for it to be yeah. fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Um, remind me what the stupid steel one's called. Python. Python. Looking at it, I I don't know what type of ride it is. A SLC, maybe? It's a Vacoma. Vacoma. Um, what are they called? Custom looping coaster, maybe? I, I okay. can't remember. What... Steel looping coaster? I... Just look it up. I can't for remember yourself. what they're called. It's called Python. I mean, the yeah, they're, they're, it's an old school looper. Yeah. You know. Looks horrendous. Looks like the type of ride that I avoid. Mm, with, the, with the funny shaped um, funny track. Shaped track. <laughs> the, see, that, see that track and then you turn the other way and yeah, walk away. Yeah, usually. Um, I believe they've retracked it, yes. which has saved my life. Because I don't think I would have managed it otherwise. No, it's not the coma track on it anymore. Okay. Well, that would be why it was tolerable. It was fine. It was fine. It was fine. But, I mean, I don't want to open your can of worms on this one. But it just doesn't go with that area. It looks stupid. No, um... And also, sorry, but that track just looks very dated. Is that just me? 
Well, yeah, I think it probably is you. Cause it just you know. feels very 90s. Well, it is 90s. And so, looks a bit meh. Mm. Yeah. And mean. they haven't bothered to seam it. No. They're just leaving it as that, is. That, that is the problem, essentially, is that everything... Well, as, as the afternoon has grown and expanded, every ride seems to be more themed and more immersive and, you know, better integrated into the park than the last. And yeah. Python was rethemed. Sorry, rethemed. What? Sorry, what Python theming? was refurbed. <laughs> oh right, okay. I was going to say relatively recently. I can't really think of when. Somewhere between like twenty fourteen and twenty eighteen, I think. Okay. Um, which really should have mean. Um, Baron was twenty sixteen, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, oh, was it twenty fifteen? Something like All that. All these facts. I know. Terrible. So realistically, it should have been almost redone to the standard of Baron, but it just wasn't right they they replaced the track and opened it again fine but and why is that though i don't know because they're stupid like i don't don't think they are stupid though there must be a reason well people so i i hate the idea i hate this whole concept of theme parks retracking their objectively bad and i i can use i i really do think i can use the word objectively bad roller coaster to describe maybe not bad but like mediocre Uh, well objectively bad before it was refurbed yeah yeah, and it would have been yeah yeah, it would have been objectively yeah um basically everything built like before 95 by arrow and uh vacoma for their kind of class sorry 85 from arrow vacoma and they build their classic rides they are objectively bad because they just do do not stand up against modern standards Mm -hmm. you know they cannot be held to the same level of quality yeah so they are objectively bad and if we look at python's layout it's ridiculously boring and mundane Mm -hmm. loop loop turn corkscrew corkscrew helix end brilliant you wouldn't get that on a modern day roller coaster because no one's insane enough to build it anymore Mm -hmm. simple so objectively bad right we're ticking that off and that's that's fine i don't get why parks would keep their objectively bad roller coasters Right, I I guess I get. And well, you don't mean keep. You mean retrack and yeah, re- spend rejuvenate, money. Rejuvenate, yeah. Spend money to keep yeah. their dying roller coaster. Um, yeah, people. I I obviously know why Efton did it is because you know, like every other European theme park ever, you know, this steel looping coaster that they got back in the nineteen eighties. Is, is the their thing, beloved theme park right? Well, is the thing that started it out being a theme park, or in the Efteling's case, yes. saved it from basically dying, Yeah. right? Because it was a, a big ride that people went to the theme park to ride. Yeah. The same case as every other <laughs> European theme park Just like ever. Alton Towers. Literally, Alton Towers, Holiday Park in Germany, identical. There's so many of them that are all this, have the exact same story. Yeah. Right? Cool. Get rid of them. Right, I just don't. I it's just pointless. I I get it. I get that there's heritage involved, and you you like this ride. But if it wasn't there, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be. It would be better. Yeah. If that ride wasn't at the afternoon, that area would be nicer, and the afternoon as a whole would feel higher quality. Yeah. I ain't, I'm never going to ride that thing again. If I ever go back to the afternoon, I'm not going to ride it. Yeah, same. There's literally no reason. Even though it was fine, it rode fine. fine it was quite yeah. smooth. I'm it was gonna, fine. I'm not going to waste my time but, on it because yeah. it's not very good. No. It's objectively bad. Yeah. Even now because it's boring. But, and, and that's the thing. Why have they spent money retracking something and rebuilding something that just isn't good enough yeah. anymore? To play devil's advocate, the argument on the other side would be that it's nostalgic. Yeah, but nostalgia is a fake People love to ride it. Fake because, thing. Yeah. People love to ride it because they've ridden it for a hundred years. Yeah, I, I Which don't... Which they haven't because it was in the 90s or whatever. I don't get that argument though because you, would people... People would miss it in the short term. In the long term, I don't think people would really care. No. Because you just don't go there for that ride. No. And also... I mean, you've been talking about this on Twitter with people. For example, Alton Towers put the corkscrew at the front of, of the, the entrance. entrance. Yeah. I think that is better it is. than having the actual ride still going. Definitely. Because A, it's like, 
when you walk in, if you're nostalgic for that ride, you go, oh my God, this ride's like right at the front and they love it. And they put it, it's like a shrine and blah, blah, blah. B, if the ride was still there, you'd ride it and think, wow, this is like not as good as I remember. Not as good as I remember, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Um, Why don't you just preserve, just preserve that little memory for yourself, put it away and just crack on. Exactly. Just, it, I agree. it's never going to beat you riding it back in the day when it came out because you've ridden other stuff now. Yeah. But yeah. but then people will say that they still do love it, which... You said we weren't going to talk about this for too long. Yeah. So we'll, we'll skip over that and we'll come back to it in another episode. Yeah, I, it's just I would too like deep. to... There's, I think there's many a good example of how I can completely ruin people's concept of nostalgia and yeah. why it's just a bad idea generally. Heartless. Um, but yeah. anyway, so that was fine. It's we did lit- that one. Literally fine, unthemed, doesn't fit, pointless. Like I get rid of it. Just one final point about that. When we were riding that, I just felt like I wasn't in the Efteling anymore. Exactly, I agree. So yeah, anyway. 100%. Uh, then it was the water ride. Um, yeah, the Flying Dutchman. It translates. Is that to, what it is? Yeah. Um, I can't remember. I, can't, I, I don't want to butcher it. Like something. it's a log flume on a track. It's a water coaster. It's a water coaster. <laughs> a lock For people who don't know what a water coaster is. It's a water coaster. Is. Is. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, okay. I didn't know if there was different types of it's water coaster. It's a water coaster. coaster built by Comeback who couldn't finish it, so then Intamin finished it. So there's only one of them in the world, and that is it. Yeah. I think the reason why we liked this so much, because A, it wasn't fully working when we rode it. It, it was... The effect. Essentially, it couldn't have been worse. <laughs> Yeah, and it was still and absolutely it was still very brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've not done many of these. and Well, it's not overly too many uh, out there. No. Um, so I... maybe it's the novelty of that kind of ride. But also, I would argue, this, A, the like, theming outside of the building and the very whole area good. is insane. Very good. It's like... Pi- what's the uh, what's the two mixes like pirate and medieval mixed yeah, together yeah, basically. because it blends with the Joris bit yeah love that then you yeah, go pirate into and the... medieval is a really yeah. good way to describe it. but but you can see when you look at that building you can see both of those styles like into yeah the station the best situation station i've ever been in and even like walking to the station yeah very was good was very very good yeah like really good yeah um yeah, you walk through like little alleyways and there's like a little bit of a pub on the way, like a bar. Then you go through and you can see down into the station and it's like windows along the walkway and you go down the steps and then it's basically, obviously you're loading boats so it's like a little river. But then people are like queuing up by the sides but there's like all houses and like shops and stuff. But just like the amount of detail and everything was madness. It's very good. Very good. Very good. But yeah, so we went on and apparently there's meant to be some mist in the little intro bit where you're in the boat. There's like three rooms before you actually get to the roller coaster section. And I think I like water coasters a lot because they are dark rides with payoff. Yeah. You know, you get some dark rides like, say, Pirates of the Caribbean which is obviously a really good dark ride with a very, you know, loads of... Anticlimactic. Well, loads of animatronics, but it's it's, it's basically... It's a small world with maybe this one tiny drop on it that doesn't really do anything. Yeah. Right? So there's no real payoff. You just... It's whatever the theming is, which is fine because that's what a dark ride is. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, if you're in a boat, I kind of expect something bigger to happen. You know, put me on a track dark ride and then that's where you could do it. I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um... But with with a water coaster, if you have all of these scenes at the beginning, there's your dark ride bit. Then you build to the climax of the roller coaster section. Nice roller coaster drop into a splashdown really seals the deal. Mm-hmm. You know, perfect. And it doesn't even have to be that long. Yeah, so, it's not that long. No, it's not. But I'd I'd argue that the the roller coaster section could be even shorter. Yeah, and it would still provide the same amount of payoff. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the three rooms. There's meant to be, like, yeah, loads of, essentially, I don't want to spoil it too, I mean, it's open, been open for ages, so I will spoil it. Um, there's meant to be, the second room is meant to be full of mist completely. Mm-hmm. 
so that you literally cannot see your fingers in front of you, your hand in front of you. Which would be so scary. Very cool, very scary. The final scene, um, there is water that is meant to fall and essentially have like a curtain of water. That curtain of water is on a conveyor system that moves. So as you kind of move through the room, the water moves with you. Shut up, I've not heard this before. And on top of that water is a projection of a sea, like a, sea, a video sequence that built, you know, adds to the, of the story sea. of of the boat that you're about to go okay. into. Okay. So you see this boat um, oh, on the as water as if you're going to crash into a boat. Kind of, yeah. And then you dive into the boat that's physically there at the end. Oh, okay. We obviously had the physical bit at the end, and everything on the lift hill. There's meant to be water running down the sides, which we didn't have, but the projection on the lift hill worked for us. Yeah. But it's mainly the fact that, you know, we could tell that these rooms that we were in, you weren't meant to be able to see. Yeah, yeah. Because they were unseen, some of them. And you're like, as soon as that's the case, you know, well, I'm not meant to be able to see this. Yeah. But it was still cool because they have like a little lantern on the front of the boat and that's all you can see. It's just a little light coming from there, which I loved. Because you could see like the shadows of the people in front of you and it was all very... Very moody and it would be even more moody if it was all fog. It would be so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, yeah, we end up with the budget version, but it's still very good. Mm-hmm. And uh, I something to look forward to. Wow, well, this is it. But I think it really plays into again the well-roundedness of the afternoon. Is it's a water coaster, it's a water ride that packs a punch, but it's still a dark ride. I don't know. It, it's more parks should build those kind of things. Yeah, I'd really love should. for like old towers to get an identical thing even smaller yeah it doesn't have to be as big you know roller coaster section could be a lot smaller and there could be less rooms but yeah i think it really works as a as a concept mm-hmm. yeah uh Are we what's trying to the, think other, of what what's was the next? other roller coasters the kiddie roller coasters the little the little um max and Morris. whatever and whatever yeah is that what we did next it might be you know yeah it might be yeah i actually loved those because like they're just so funny and the music but so basically i don't know must be so you've said it was a character that's like you know the characters that everyone in the netherlands knows or something well again it's like a folk tale storybook character so it's like these two little are they kids or men i don't know um wow, and one of them's like i didn't really look that closely one of them's like this color and then the other one's the other color one of them's fat two... and stumpy and the other one's tall and all lanky. right calm I mean, down that, that's basically it um right? yeah so there's two roller coasters that duel is that the word sure okay um and they're like are they launched a pair of powered powered they're, they're mac rides oh, powered coasters yeah and um they blast like music, but it's a different song for each train. Yeah, on board audio. Yeah. And the songs are really good. Yes. They're quite funny. And they fit exactly like what the ride's doing. And then also like when you start, you can see in the station, there's like the little models of the guys on the mm. ceiling on a bike. And they like pedal Pedaling. as if they're like pushing it along, which yeah. I just think is so funny. I think the other two things really good about the ride is one, that the layouts are super compact and really intertwined. Oh my God, insane. Yeah. Which is really cool. That they've managed to fit such a dense amount of track in, in a small space. It's frantic, is and the word. The second thing is that the second lap is faster. Yeah. So, and the audio, and the audio is faster to quicker. accompany yeah. it. Yeah. And that's just so cool. Yeah. It's such a great idea. To As make a kid, it run that would be just incredible to go on. Yeah. They're really like, good. I would just lap that. Yeah. Oh, no, they know? are really, really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're pretty much like the newest big things there. Uh, Which is such a good addition because they're missing that kind of like steel kid thing yeah. like very kiddie thing yeah i know i agree um the 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 area you could tell the area is pretty young and the back of it is currently under basically being completely refurbed because it's where spook slot the old uh ride that they're rebuilding is so yeah the area very much doesn't look as if it's um in its final form quite yet yeah but you know you can appreciate still, that still still insane what else? What size better first? What else? Oh, uh, I don't know what the consensus is on this. It's Moritz, we think. Okay. Is that the green one? The orange one? The orange? What colour The one they? on the right. 
the first one, one we did. The first one. We yeah, did. yeah, the first one we did. The one, the second one had a, a water cannon. Can you remember? Yes. It's not the one with the water cannon. <laughs> yeah, the other one. <laughs> the other one. Yeah. Exactly. So. I think it's Moritz because didn't I choose that as the yeah, first one? Yeah, it is Moritz. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. Good. And what good. was next? I don't know what else there is. I think is. it was... Oh, the vulture one. No. It was then... Um, Fatu Morgana. No. We got... we. How long have we been going? Should we just do roller coasters? We're just going to have to route through. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's, let's just go through the quick ones then that we don't really care too much about. Fatu okay. Morgana. Fatu Morgana is essentially a reskinned Pirates of the Caribbean. Fata Morgana is right. mental. That's what it is, isn't it? Yes. It, it's a it's a boat ride. A boat ride with loads of animatronics. So yeah. basically, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, but with a different theme. No, but when you say loads of animatronics, loads. This is the most animatronics I've ever seen one in my the, life. One of the in rooms one place. has like fifty. It seems Fi- it's ridiculous. more than fifty. Like, I swear, yeah, there's a hundred yeah. in there. There's lots. Incredible. I guess is it Arabian? I, I think, right? <sighs> oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I I don't really know the whole story. It's. It's one of the old older dark rides there, and you can tell. Um, I didn't really get it. No, because I don't know if you're meant to get it. No. It's very... Everybody keeps explaining the story to us in the comments, and I get I get that it's Arabian, and like we're looking at this place, and blah, blah. What's the wizard about? Why do we go through like 10 scenes of like poor people doing different things? That like living a horrendous life, and then suddenly we're in the middle of the party of like really rich people, and there's like a hundred people in the room, and there's like belly dancers and tigers and everything. Like what? There's no story. There's no story as such. Like people say, oh, the story of Fatima Morgana is you're in this place and you go through it. That's not a story. It's just like scenes of a theme. Are you with me? Sure. I don't really have much to say. I don't think there's a story. It was fine. Yeah. It, it, it's good. It's it, a good dark like... ride and a cool to witness, yeah. but I don't really get it. I actually kind of liked it more than I think I realised. Yeah. But I didn't get it. Anyway. And I don't know if you meant to get it anyway. No. Cool building though. Very From cool. From across the lake. Very it's nice. It's all very cool. Everything in F I think is cool. After Fatima Morgana was Symbolica. Symbolica. Now, we could do 40 minutes on Symbolica. <laughs> Yeah, we really could. Um, just incredible. Best dark ride I've ever been on. Yeah. It's uh, a trackless dark ride. So there's like, you, they essentially load three independent vehicles that then interact with each other as they go around the ride. Um, it was pretty much a surprise every single turn. I'd, I'd seen some scenes of Symbolica, mm-hmm. but even, you know, the pre show. Oh my god, the pre-show, pre-show was, was hilarious. was really good. The animatronics were really cool. Yeah. And the way you then kind of enter the actual ride station. Yeah. Station's a bit lackluster, actually, thinking about it. Like, yeah, relative to the like, entire um, ride. It's pretty crap. It's kind of like... Um, um, oh my god, what's that guy called? What's the guy called that writes books that has the old tower area? Oh, David Wang. Yeah, the you know the dark ride there. It's kind of that that vibe where you just kind of like rock up right at the end and you're just there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't know the the. It feels a bit underground, kind of afterthought thing. Yeah, but maybe that's the part of the story because you know you are kind of I don't Entering, know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If it, just thinking about it then, but um, pretty much every scene on that is is really cool. Yeah. Are you, we spoiling the scenes? I you can put a spoiler note on this episode. If you'd like to. People can skip forward. If, yeah, if you skip, know, skip, if they, skip, skip, skip. If they want. Um, the on-ride audio is really cool. Essentially, you get to choose from three different journeys, and each kind of journey is, is a theme to a different thing. So one is heroes, one is music, music, and the other one is... I was treasure. Say, treasure, yeah. yeah. I was going to say jewellery, but yeah, treasure. Jewelry. Um, and as, what that means is essentially there's like one and a half scenes that are different yeah but still cool it, it's cool that they're all you know that they've kind of separated them out because then it means that you have to ride it three times yeah, to exactly. experience everything which is you know a really good way to get people to rewrite it um but yeah they are not really that different we'll let them off uh favorite scene in that the ballroom scene the ballroom scene is the very ballroom cool. scene 
when we entered, I was literally shook off. I had no idea what, what was happening. That's very cool. And then I looked around and there was like, uh, not animatronics. Are they animatronics? Whoa. Dancing yeah, yeah, in yeah. couples. And they just, the characters are so funny. Like one of them's really tall and dancing with like the shortest woman. And I just was like, what is that? And then you spin around and you keep seeing more stuff that's incredible. Yeah. Well, there's like, all of the statues on the side that are going up yeah. and down at the same time. The king was there d- his drinking wine. his actual wine. Yeah. Wow. Just literally, I was like, this is magic. It's obviously good enough when you know that um, Disney's Beauty and the Beast ride has a very similar ending scene, which is a ballroom scene where they're dancing. What Beauty and the Beast ride? Well, they've been... Is it Japan or Shanghai? They built an a, actually good one. A, 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 a trackless dart ride, Beauty and the Beast. Oh, okay. And it has a very similar ending right, scene right, right. where all of the ride vehicles are in a ballroom yeah. with them dancing in the middle. Yeah. You know, so when when that happens, you'd obviously know that you've done a yeah a good job. What that came after this? Yeah, it came yeah, after. exactly. Because they yeah. went, why have we not done this when we own fairy tales? Like, what are they doing? <laughs> That's hilarious. And they might have been in, in construction at the same time. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now nah, Efteling did it first. Well, mate. they did do it. No first, worries. Century. But yeah, very cool. Uh, my favorite scene. Obviously, that's very much one of them. To be fair, literally every scene has its merits. Yeah. I really enjoyed the very first scene, the astronomy <gasps> scene. <gasps> I forgot about that bit. It's yes. very cool. And that's I a, just, such an introduction. Isn't it so good? Yes. I'm literally about to cry because are we going to spoil this as well? Yeah. Yeah. So fun. you enter this like almost like a, um, a library. Or... What's it? What's it called with yeah. the ceiling where you can see the stars? Um, Planetar- planetarium. Planetarium. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like a library of planetarium, isn't it? Because there yeah, are yeah, books yeah. on the There's all books and it's like a learning environment. <laughs> and then the wizard guy is in the middle, the the wizard that's doing the spell. And then our friend, who I forget his name. Pa- Pardus. Pardus. Yeah, the character who's like the Efteling character. He's there and you all like go in a little line and you go round the wizard. And then one by one, you get Fantastic, magic. Fantastic, huh? Yeah, what is he saying? I can't remember. Yeah, anyways, here's a phrase. And... Basically, the like all the carriage lights up as if it's magic like Fantastica is... Magic or something like that. Yeah, remember. yeah, yeah. Like the magic hits your carriage and then carriage as if it's a carriage, and somehow it like lights up and it's incredible. And I love being the last carriage because you get to see the other ones like, yeah, in action. Yeah. Whereas if you're first, you don't really like appreciate what it is. They light um, up and then speed up. Yeah, and they? then you like spin away and then you're off. What's cool is on the planetarium, you can as your kind of time in the room progresses. You can see more star constellations appear. Yeah. It's very, very clever. I've just forgotten or remembered the whale scene. The whale scene. scene. <laughs> and can't that's the other scene I, I was going to mention. about the whale scene. The whale scene. Um, what? So, yeah, the, the scene after, like, there's a really good scene followed by, like, a, a still a fine, very good yeah, scene, scene, but not quite as yeah. good scene. Um, yeah, and the whale scene is oh for, my God. fantastic. Where you go into, like, this. Uh, it's the botanical yeah botanical area. gardeny kind mm-hmm. of thing you're in um like, like a, a like a glass room yeah almost. what do you call those room those buildings um, um glass houses basically oh i don't know no, I, can't remember. I don't know but you're in one of them um and there's like a whole glass wall with water behind it yeah and then you know Pardus waves his wand and you see this whale come down as you and do. basically, like, say hello to you. A but, massive uh, whale. A huge whale. And then the uh, the glass starts to crack and water spurts <laughs> out of the glass. And then Padus looks very... He looks very sp- shocked. Very spooked. Yes. And tells and you says, to quickly hurry, go. Hurry, hurry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very cool. It's very so cool because it's literally as if the whale is going to break this glass and then you're quickly, swift and yes. swiftly moved away. Yeah. Forgot about that. How could you forget ah. about that? Yeah. Would you say that um, Symbolica is your favourite dart ride so far? Yes, 100%. It is a very good one. It what is... else is beating it? Come on. Well, it, it, it's difficult, isn't it? Because No. No, well, <laughs> hold on. No, it's I not. I think it's difficult to compare certain rides together because... Yeah, because it's another league. No, but no, because they're very different in what they're trying to offer. Like, would you class Tower of Terror as a dart ride? No, because it's not. It's like a drop tower. Wow, that's a drop tower dart ride, isn't it? 
Oh, this is another episode. Is it, I mean, this is another episode. So I, I, I'd episode. be reluctant to say, you know, it's my favorite dark ride because it's... sorry, Tower of Terror is not a dark ride. When you when you go on like roller coaster, whatever it is, encyclopedia, what does Database. it say next to it? <laughs> it's not on. Well, what do you mean? What does it say? What does it say? What what well, class? I, what category Google are we talking about? Tower of Terror. Yeah. Let's have a look at that. Tower. It will say a uh, drop ride. Of Terror. I'll do Wikipedia. I don't think Wikipedia is going to have like dart ride or anything like that well what, go to the opening attraction sentence. type shut drop up. tower dark ride shut up <laughs> <laughs> incredible okay so it is it is um but you know but i think that's unfair because then you just have to take out the drop part of it you'd have to just assess the dark ride it's element. not a traditional dark ride yeah, yeah. it's and, too complicated but that's what i mean i i like i like untraditional ride types in that sense M- like blending essentially things. you take a, a more thrilling ride type and add a dart ride section and your ride is instantly better but sorry no this is going but, into, no no this yeah, is but, going into two but deep. symbolico is a dedicated dart ride and parks need dedicated dart rides yeah that, they aren't about the thrills they're just about being absolute spectacles yeah and that is exactly what symbolica is so as a pure dart ride symbolica is the best dart ride i've been on thank you we have not been to orlando yet um so we I haven't don't seen know we haven't seen Rise of the Resistance. That's true. Yeah, but uh, you have to walk in that. Flight of Passage? Is that a dark ride? Is a flying theatre no, a dark ride? it's a flying theatre, Harry. I, what are you on about? Okay, sure. Um, so we shall see if okay. there are... Spider-Man is meant to be very good as well. Mm. Uh, there's many forbidden... Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Mm. But those aren't like traditional dark rides. It's Green God, Escape from Green Gods is a dark ride roller coaster. Okay. Uh, so many other ones to experience. Yes, well. You've been to Disneyland Paris, though, and, and it beats every single dark ride there. It beats Ratatouille. Ra- the rat 100%. ride at Disneyland Paris, it pales in comparison gone. to Symbolica. I used to think that was incredible. I never now... thought it was incredible. No, the track, the trackless element <laughs> The technology was, cre- was very cre- cool. But the way... I, I mean, it's still good. It's... it's anyway, it's forget not, that. It's okay for a Disney park. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Let's not get into the rat Symbolica ride would be top tier at a Disney Park. It would. It really would. The, they're they're doing it all wrong. Anyway. Uh Symbolica, yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. We very wrote it three good. times. We wrote it three times. We dedicated I think we wrote it once. Could and have then wrote went it back. twice more. Did we do it all no, I think we, we did need... two and then we went back for one. Did we? Yes, we did. Okay. Yes, sure. we did. Um Yeah, Symbolica. Then we Let's did... talk about the Vulture ride. Vogel Rock. Yes. Go on then. No idea what happened no. on that. It's an um, indoor roller coaster. Yes. And. One of the older rides again. It was fine. Well, was it fine? It was weird. As indoor family roller coasters go, I think it was pretty good. Yeah. For some reason, this is the bit that I don't get. You're eaten by a snake. Yes. A massive snake mouth. So. How could a snake. I was informed. A, how could the a whole snake. Story, Oh, okay. This. So it must be some kind of magic snake, because why would it be that big? No, no. It can't eat a vulture. At the very beginning of the ride, before yeah. you go on the lift hill, you see an egg. Right. You are no living stop. the experience... No stop. ...of a v- baby <gasps> vulture, basically, being born and living your life. And then a snake eats the egg. The snake eats you. <gasps> but I'm the egg. You are egg the... egg or the, a baby vulture? Okay. <laughs> Right, so the snake's eaten a baby vulture. Yes. Okay. So you're living your life. I am. Okay. Um, they could have explained that to us before we started. They could have. Okay. It, it's one of the, you can tell it's from the other right. Um, I, I always have what's the word a bias against indoor roller coasters because I sometimes think that they're lazy mm-hmm. because you know as soon as you're in pitch black you don't have to add any theming because mm-hmm. of the black put some lasers in there it's really cool <laughs> there were no AKA lasers though to every clarify. single disney indoor roller coaster yeah. except for probably guardians of the galaxy um i don't know though they might have added a laser in that one i mean there are lasers but there's a lot more than okay. just lasers okay but this one I think it's a good mix. I think there's enough kind of... There are some really cool scenes that you fly through and see during the ride, like mm-hmm. being eaten by a snake. Lots of kind of visual lights as well. Um, Do you know what I liked about it? I mean, obviously it's Efteling, so nothing's that darkly themed. But every time you do one of them, it tends to be... Well, I don't know. 
every time. You know, like the one at Thorpe Parks, the horror horror type thing. Walking Dead. We we don't need to be doing dark things. Just let's just have a nice standard theme. Do you know what I mean? Just because we're going into pitch black, it doesn't need to be a horror ride. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? It was just it was just like I wasn't worried that there was going to be a mummy like jumping out of the side or whatever because it was just well there was a snake but it was just you're not gonna nice. Like, you're not gonna like uh, mummy at okay, Universal brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Studios Orlando, are you? Absolutely not. It's very good. But apparently. um, but yeah, it was fine. It, it was a it was a good indoor family dark ride, indoor roller coaster. Yeah. I mean the kids were <laughs> lapping it, so what more can you? Yeah, want? we rode it once. The problem that we found was um, the on ride photo was like the very beginning, and it's very dark until you get hit by this flashbang of a <laughs> of a light, and you just can't see basically for the mm. entire ride. Maybe that's on purpose. Maybe, but. It was long enough, but not too long. It was it threw you around enough, but not too much. You know, it, it had all of the good seeds of a indoor roller coaster. I don't know. I I don't really have too much to say about it because it was. It is what it, it is. It is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, we'll just gloss quickly over the "It's a Small World" carnival slash, festival. Uh, very, Terrible very ride. That is another one I, I won't be going on again ever. Yeah. What a waste of time. Uh, just not necessary in this no. day and age. Um, what else do we go on? I kind of want to do Drum. drum. No, I mean, that's and no, 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 no. Let's it. save that to the end. Is what, what I mean. What else I is just there? that's the one we need to end on. Um, the fairy tale village mm-hmm. that you walk through. Yeah. I don't know why there's so many mm. scenes because you could just spend all day there. Genuinely, well, because again, we were like, that was what the beginning of the park was about, wasn't it? So. Yeah, there's so many, so many, and some of them are like extremely elaborate, like massive buildings with like bits you walk through. Well, some of them are scenes. regularly repeating shows, aren't they? What do you mean? Was yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Like they've got moving at, things. No, but they? like actual shows that people. Oh, actual shows. Yeah, like five minute shows that people watch. Like no it's a few way. of them. We 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 pretty much just went through. We only had one day at the park, right? And it was a uh, ten till six. So we spent like an hour going through the whole place, but we weren't able to essentially stop at every single yeah. thing. It was madness, though. There's yeah, it's so crazy. Many of them. There's yeah. a lot of detail. Yeah, loved it. It's so good to have that as well. Like if we went for three days or something, you could easily go for three days, spend quite a lot of time looking at it all, like chilling in there. So nice. Um, Other rides except for the main event. Is that all the rides we went on? Well, all the rides we went on, yeah, as far as I'm aware. Okay, let's talk about it then. Go on then. What's it called again? Well, it's Dream Fluke, doesn't it? Dream But Dream Dream Flight. Dream Flight. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I just don't know why I love it so much. It's just the weirdest... Like, it's as if someone just randomly plucked it from... Literally, they had a dream of this, like, scenario. Basically, you enter a room full of, like, nymphs? Fairies? Yeah, fairies. Yeah, fairies is a good way Creatures? to describe it. Creatures? I don't know what they are. They've got wings... There's like loads of them just chilling in this like fairy tale meadow scene. And you just don't know where to look because they're everywhere. And you know that thing where it almost reminds me of like Lego, the mini village, where you just keep seeing like different different things things that are really funny. Like one of them's like, I don't know. I can't even think of a funny one. But like they're just being a really funny situation and it was great and then i can't remember what's next oh, at some point there's a space at some point there. you go to space and there's like planets in front of you and one of them is obviously the one that we were just on and then does that mean we're going to another planet Maybe. i don't know and then and then the final scene is like <laughs> you come out and there's some like kind of um what's the word troll neanderthal type trolls are they trolls kind of like little trolls aren't they okay they're like um 
like Flintstone vibe people yeah. just swinging from a tree or something. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, this is another weird scene. And then it like slowly pans round, and essentially you're in this massive like tunnel right at the top. Cylin- yeah, cylinder. Yeah. And you're helixing down this huge room and everywhere you look, there's like men like hanging from the branch. Like you're in a forest basically and they're hanging from all these trees and stuff. And anyway, you get to the bottom and then there's like more on the floor. But we just, the the moment we like entered that room, we just like were in shock. And it was like the funniest thing it because was. we had no idea it was going to happen. Yeah. And we we're just like, what, like, what is this? Mm. I think first thing to say it's a very 90s ride. Yeah. Very 90s. Mm-hmm. Even down to the ride system, which feels a bit jank. Yeah. But, but kind of adds it. to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It needs to so be. So the, the whole ride system is, you are it's like a suspended roller coaster. You're yeah. sitting in a bucket underneath the track and the bucket can pivot and rotate to show you specific things, right? And it literally looks like roller coaster track. So the entire time going around, I was thinking, this is like a roller coaster, <laughs> um and i noticed that we kept going up mm-hmm. and i was like okay we keep going up when are we going to come down <laughs> especially just before the big spiral scene because there's a huge so incline yeah, yeah 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 and Around i was like surely we've got to go down and i was thinking yeah. to myself as soon as we go down this counts as a roller coaster i think i thought in my head that we were going to slowly go back down like there'd be more right. scenes and more scenes and more scenes but then yeah, when I it just know it opened out wrong. into this massive tube, I was like, But you really dokey. pick up some pace going yeah. down. Like, super. It's so funny. Yeah. I can't explain why it's so funny. No. It, it was like the shock clever. of like, what is happening? Yeah. And then we were spinning and going down. And yeah. And it also reminded me of like the Winger thing at Fantasia Land. Mm. Just thinking of it, to, for them to be able to pivot you perfectly towards the center as you go round... I would have thought it would feel more jank than that because it doesn't really feel janky no, at smooth. all. Yeah, but I would have thought because when you do another scene, sometimes it almost like shakes as it rotates. Yeah. You know, like rotates a bit and then kind of. Yeah, but shakes. surely it's in a little like track that just it it's, goes it's, round. So it's it doing so it. it's it's locked in place, but the track is like positioning. Oh, you. of course it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, you're right, you're right. yeah. So it's so you're not place. spinning. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's yeah. in the track. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as soon as they lock it, then it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very good. Very good. Hilarious. A- yes. Like, absolutely hilarious. I think we did it twice, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we ran There's back to it the end. That we yeah, did yeah, as well, yeah. yeah. That's one that you could just sit on for ages as yeah. well. Just keep going round and round and round. I mean, to sum up our day, we, because it was only one day, we didn't get to spend like loads of time just looking at things. Mm-hmm. We didn't really get to watch any shows. We definitely could have explored more, but I feel like with the amount of time we had, we did pretty well. Yeah. Getting on everything. For sure. Enough times and experiencing, you know, the, the rides per se. Um, would you go back? What do you think the answer is? <sighs> yes, I would. I think we will go back. They're currently building a new hotel right next to the entrance. So the entrance looks a bit sad in places. Um, and they're also, as I said, they're re well, redeveloping uh, their haunted walk through attraction, Spook Slot, which is meant to turn into some sort of actual dark ride. Still okay. kind of like a haunted house, but or, uh, okay. But in a um, kid kid haunted house. Well, yeah. I well we'll find out, won't we? Okay. Um, and I think both of those are probably meant to open, at the, you know, near early twenty four. So, oh. so that'll be a time to go back. Gutted. Not next year. Gutted for me. That's actually, that's actually really sad that we're not going to go back for ages. What, for two years? Yeah. It's fine. I was just looking at a date. Oh, right. Oh, so it could be less than two years. There's other theme parks to go to. No, there's only one. Well, we'll see. Um, but yeah, no, it's a very nice park to be in. You could spend so long there. The roller coasters are really super rewritable and a lot of fun. You know, none of them are particularly the best, but they're all really enjoyable. And then the dark rides are just really kind of finish off the collection of yeah. various attractions. And I think having spooks a lot back. Um, it would add to it even more. Yeah, I think it could do with a, maybe a bit more of a spooky dark ride. Yeah. I think that would fit really well. Mm-hmm. So it's only going to get better. And I guess this, the point to bring up is, let me just check when Baron opened. When did it open? 
Yeah, 2015, right? So within the space of, well, if you think of new additions since Baron, you've got Baron, you've got um, Max and Moritz, you've got Symbolica. Yeah. The park would not feel the same without those no, three no, rides, no. would it? No. They, they're all like super really fitting additions Mm -hmm. um especially baron and symbolica you could not literally you could not imagine Mm -hmm. the part without them um you know and that's over the space of well pretty much like five six years yeah so what what are they going to do in another five six years this is it the rate that they're improving the park is incredible yeah um so it's definitely one that's just going to continue to get better and better. They really know what they need. They know what they want and they know how to do it mm-hmm. at this point. And they're, they're doing di- it. Well, this is it. And they're doing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Essentially, if you want like a, a Disney level experience without the commercial Disney aspect. Yeah. And you want it to feel more homely and more European, then the Efteling is the way to go for that. Yeah. But also... Uh... Don't all rush there because what? we don't want too many people going uh, and spoiling the park. Well, because I want to get on Dream whatever. Dream flight. Don't take. They already seat. get loads of visitors. Yeah, they do. They do. But their rides are built to deal with them. Ah, <sighs> because they're just the best. They are just the best. There you go. Then we are back. Cool. Uh, before we go. If you're listening this far and um, you're listening either within October 2022 or November of 2022, Vocosis is out. Way! Which means that we're looking, well, we need your help to find the world's best roller coasters of 2022. Woo woo! So. When does it open, Harry? Well, it opens slash opened the 1st of November. Okay. Right, so, so get voting. So get yeah. Essentially, you can go on the website, and create an account, and rank all of the roller coasters that you've ridden, including Dream Flight, because I added it oh, to the database. Oh my lord, you did not. <laughs> so okay, I'm putting that, that right up to number one. Um, yeah, you rank all of the roller coasters that you've ridden. We then take loads of people's lists. I think we had three, four thousand people. Yeah, uh, I think it was about four thousand entries last year. Over a hundred and. Over 100,000 or 200,000 roller coasters were ranked, I mm-hmm. think. Something's a stupid number. We compile all of the lists together, then compare individual roller coasters to see how high, like where they ranked in people's lists to figure out which ones are the best. And that reduces bias. So even though loads of people have ridden Steel Vengeance, doesn't necessarily mean Steel Vengeance is going to win because it's. So it's, it's not weighted it's, on how often it's. It's been not ridden. weighted on popularity. It's weighted on quality. Yes. Basically, where your list, well, how high it compares to another roller coaster in your list, yep. not how many times it appears in everyone's list. Yeah. Um, Basically, it's a very fair way of judging. Yeah. So if you want um, to help us find the world's best roller coasters, you know, if you want go to go to coasterbot.com go to votecoasters.com <laughs> <laughs> you'll find it on our website as well yes. but yeah go but there the voting ends uh, at the end of November so quick you have get like Drew's looked at the top of your 30 list 30 days to do so but okay. yeah should be interesting anyway yes. as Zoe said we're back um, if you have any thoughts about what we should talk about yep. or if you just want to say welcome back then yep. you can tweet us at coasterbot yep. the old podcast Twitter account is dead. It's dead. So just at Coasterbot, uh, or you can leave a review on iTunes. Is that sort of thing? Yes. Can you leave a review on Spotify? Uh, I don't know. You can definitely follow us so that you yeah. make sure you get the episodes into your feed or whatever you have. Yeah. Um, we'll be back end of each fr- last Friday of each month. Yeah. One episode a month. Yeah. About an hour, <laughs> depending on how long we're talking. And, unless we're talking about the afternoon. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Cool. Bye.